I never would have thought that a simple phone check would be the key to uncovering my wife's infidelity. But what I saw in her text messages made me lose my head and get into the game. Today, I'm going to tell you the real story of how I uncovered my wife's cheating using her own phone. There really are a lot of accidents and coincidences, if not more, then certainly a large part of our lives. And today's story, to put it mildly, is a clear confirmation of that. And the most interesting thing about it is that besides coincidences, the very same intemperance of my wife, for which I usually scolded her, but as it turned out it was necessary to praise her, also helped me to become a bachelor. Just kidding. Anyway, as it probably happens with all young couples, this Eugenia and I were living in a rented apartment at the time. She was a final year student and I, being three years older than her, was already working in my profession and, accordingly, was saving up for my own place. To make it clear, my work was connected with felling. It is clear that right after the wedding, on the pair with his family persuaded me to take a mortgage. No, well, what? Say, a young family, strong, you will live happily ever after, at least, so we said in Z-A-K-S. Well, take a mortgage, and the money for the first payment we will give you ourselves. I do not know what intuition then helped me out, but despite all the inconveniences associated with rental and fairly expensive housing mortgage as her parents' money, then I did not take. And as it turned out, I did the right thing. Now I cannot even imagine what a huge pain in the neck waiting for me now with that mortgage if I then flew into it. But closer to the subject, in general, since I am a young professional, at work, I get the work they give, and they give often business trips to the woods for two or three days. There are various distant plots for which we get permission to cut, and to go back and forth over the hundreds of miles every day is not to move. Often it happens that unfold the camp right in the woods. Since cell phone service in the woods is a relative concept, my wife and I have developed a tradition. As soon as I arrive instead of the destination, I either call her or what happens more often write on the internet message or at least a text message, and each time about the same. I arrive, I find the time and opportunity I call kisses. As you have already realized, the connection in those business trips are not everywhere and not always. So, in fact, and the second part of the message about the call is very conditional. To cut a long story short, Having once again come to some debris a hundred kilometers away from my wife, I wrote her the same kind of messages, and, as usual, they were not sent at once. Connection was and was not, in short, the phenomenon is normal, and I put my phone in my pocket, as always I hoped that it would be sent later, but a little later. Then I was in a hurry, apparently, did not pay attention to the fact that the message was not sent her then sums and where we communicate normally, in messenger, remained to be the chance of delivery, it was in the woods did not have the word at all. In the woods, there was practically no cell phone reception, and let alone the internet. By the way, on the same day, closer to nightfall, I borrowed the phone from my friend, who had a different cellular operator, and that is when I calmly called my wife. In short, when I came home two days later, and, as usual, Connected to our home Wi-Fi, as you probably guessed, my message was successfully sent to his wife, and she purred in the kitchen phone. Now imagine that picture, I had just come home, and as soon as my wife stepped back into the kitchen, I immediately sent a message that I had reached and kissed. As soon as I had a chance to call, the text clearly to someone who was not male. The 23-year-old madam, and even with the character of Eugenia, put the whole puzzle together in a second, and the next hour and a half was waiting for me to search all my belongings, as well as threats to call all our employees, of course for the purpose of their interrogation. My exclamations to call and ask questions I had nothing to fear was perceived by her as an additional insolence and my confidence that the whole affair was covered, and if I was just saying call the person you want. It meant only that I had already made arrangements with everyone in advance. In short, in the second hour of the scandal, when it came to the search of my belongings. I thought it was too humiliating, 
and jokingly told her that all that she is interested, long ago already thrown out and disturbed the order in the backpack is no longer necessary to her. And here to my surprise, Dinechka calmed down and I strained. She went into the kitchen and after drinking water there, she came back into the room and said that she had always suspected that these business trips of mine would not end well. However, there are circumstances that caused her not to say a word to me, and now, as painful and difficult as it was for her, she was relieved after all. About that, I asked her, and after her answer, I immediately remembered of the non-existent mortgage. As it turned out, a year ago, shortly before our wedding, I had a competitor, and such that I had been chasing her almost since their first year. As Eugenia says, the wedding was a huge shock for her, and probably for this completely far-fetched reason, and being on emotion, she slept with him on goodbye. But now that we were both, well, kind of even, she suggested that I start all over again, and that she and I had better get drunk tonight. I don't know if she got drunk that night or not, but after showing her the date of this message, and that I was also sending a smiley face of the forest after it, I was already closing the door behind her in half an hour. That's how this story ended. Eugenia went to her parents, and I continued to work in the forest, collecting for my own place. And by the way, I did change my cellular operator back then. Have you ever wondered what could happen if your partner's cheating leads to a divorce? That's what happened to this man when he caught his wife cheating and made the decision to take everything that belonged to him. This is the story of how one man decided to go to extreme measures to get revenge for his wife's cheating. This story will be a little different from all the other stories on this channel. Mine is the story about how, as we know, like attracts like to like, idleness is the devil's toy, and most importantly about doing everything and always only in strict accordance with the law. Let's start with the last one. As we all know, the law of our country has some significant hole, and coupled with its other provisions gives the unscrupulous representatives of the fair sex almost unlimited freedom of action. But at least it seems so to me. You have probably guessed by now. I am talking about the fact that no law forbids cheating. According to the current laws, a wife can spend her whole life without working, without investing in the house, living solely at the expense of the man, and then at any time, by cheating she can take her half. And if I have children, in 99% of cases so do they. Well, and then in addition to claim alimony. This is the law. And the spending of this alimony, by the way also then there is no way to trace. Where she spent it, and that child got at least two dollars out of it. And I take it that's the law too. Can you imagine that? Now imagine this kind of story except for the baby happened to me. We had been married for over five years, and this Evgenia. At first I was hooked by her lightness. She was airy, maybe even a little windy. Not the point. The point is that as our relationship progressed, her general attitude toward life began to stress me out more and more. She worked a simple job and didn't aspire to anything in particular. It is probably understandable. I earned very, very well. And in general, we did not need the money, but really a person of 30 years does not have any ambition. But didn't she really want to realize herself in anything? In general, such a state of affairs did not fit in my head. And I often started not talking about it. Such conversations in general did not end much and nothing. She nodded and agreed, of course, but did not hurry to change anything in his life. Why am I saying this? I'm saying that sooner or later, a man's idleness will lead him to ruin, and in my wife's case, financial ruin too. Anyway, one night, she went out with her friends. It was either a reunion night or something else of that nature. But in general, the point is that I was told, well, then I was convinced and myself at this meeting, she had changed me. I do not know if it was the influence of alcohol or not, but this guy was her love at university. I apologize for taking so long to describe all this to you, but simply, words cannot be taken out of the song, and soon you will understand why. And in general, if at university, this guy was a wreck, and it could be cool, 
but now closer to 30, from the outside, it looked very strange. He didn't have a steady job, just drank alcohol and partied like he was still a student. To cut a long story short, my wife found a replacement, and now we get to the fun part. Upon learning of this, of course, I began to prepare for a divorce. However, after talking to my lawyer friends, they quickly explained to me all my prospects. Her infidelity, Leo, the court will not give a damn, my friend told me, and explained that half of the business, as well as my favorite expensive car, after a divorce I would have to consider as a gift. Imagine my condition then. I had worked all those five years, created my own business, which in the end supported both me and her, bought myself a car, and now that I was cheated on, I would have to give half of it all away. And not only that, and constantly have to see this wife at work, because half of the business will also turn out to be hers. So that's it if by law, but there is also a light at the end of the tunnel. At the beginning of this whole story, we immediately agreed that we can only act in accordance with the law, and at all, I suddenly remembered that literally just now, I took from a friend quite a large sum in debt. Of course, he and I had drawn up receipts and all the loan agreements, as well as wired all that money from his bank account to mine. I spent all this money of course on business development, that is, all this spending is shared in the family, and went not for me, but for the needs of our family. And so this debt in the division of our property in quotes, too, will be divided between the spouses in half. There was a little nuance to this debt was then divided between the two, and it was common, it was to be taken in advance of a divorce. And this was the biggest pain in the ass for me. The thing is that if conventionally speaking, I would have found out about the affair in January, and approximately in January, also borrowed from a friend, then I had better not file for divorce earlier than June. All that was needed was for the contract to lie around for a while. And the court, if the court appoints an examination of the contract, it will only confirm that it really was made in the marriage. It was put six months ago, not yesterday, and not written yesterday just now. To cut a long story short, I had to hide out somewhere for a few months, and I was staying with a friend under the pretext of business trips, and sometimes made up long sorrows. Although I don't think she missed me much at those moments, I was told that they sort of saw her and this Semyon in the days of my fictional business trip together again. Anyway, it was conditionally May, and I told her that I knew all about her, and about her cheating on that meeting, and about their secret relationship during my travels. There were a lot of tears, and besides them, it was then admitted to me that they had cheated in the first place because I was never home, that I was too correct and clever, and that one could die of boredom with me a long time ago. But this is a classic, I will omit the details, I will only say that Semyon here turns out to be more alive and interesting than me, and the fact that he gets by from penny to penny, and in general in life is a nobody, so it's far from important. Well, well, I thought, and invited her to move on to the divorce. Just there was a surprise for my ex-wife. The only way she could count on half of the business, and on my beloved car, was if along with half of all that property, she would take on half of that big debt. I advised her, if she thought of going to court, to consult a lawyer first, or else she might end up with all those debts, which she could easily get, and she would blow the rest of the money on lawyers. That's pretty much it. I don't think I did anything wrong. Especially since my wife herself said that the main thing for her was Semyon's soul, and that money was not important to her. That's how my story ended. And despite the fact that some women like to rely on the law in such situations, there was a way for me to rely on it once too. In general, everything is just as we agreed at the beginning. Everything will be strictly according to the law. That's the only way. If you like this story, don't forget to give it a like. Thank you for watching.